Welcome to Sunday School Lesson at a Glance, a ministry of the Sunday School Publishing Board, where we focus on teaching, engaging, application, and learning for teachers and students. I will be sharing highlights and key points from the Adult Faith Pathway Bible Study Sunday School book and the Townsend Press Sunday School Commentary based on the International Lesson Series. This week, we continue our summer quarter of Sunday School Lessons. The title of this quarter study is The Righteous Reign of God. This week, we continue our study in Unit 2 entitled, Jesus Envisions the Kingdom. This unit presents lessons on Jesus' kingdom teachings as found in the Gospel of Matthew. Last week, this week, and next week's lesson explore Jesus' parables of the kingdom in Matthew chapter 13. Get your Sunday school book, Bible, notepad, pen, or device, and follow along as we take a glimpse into this week's Sunday School lesson. Now let's get started with this wonderful lesson. The lesson title for this week, July the 23rd, is Growing Together, and the title in the Sunday School commentary is Weeds Among the Wheat. The background scripture is Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 43, and the print passage is Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 30, and verses 36 through 43. The key verse in this week's lesson is, Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. And that's Matthew chapter 13, verse 30, the New International Version. Here are three questions to consider and reflect on as we go through this week's lesson. Question number one, why does Jesus tell us not to uproot the weeds immediately? Question number two, what is the kingdom principle at the heart of Jesus's parable of the weeds? And question number three, what does Jesus tell us will happen during harvest time? Let's take a brief look at the lesson biblical context. As mentioned in the previous two lessons, Matthew, one of Jesus's disciples, is the author of this book that bears his name. The book of Matthew introduces the one who would be recognized as the king of the Jews. When Jesus called him, Matthew gave up all to follow Jesus. This was notable because his position as a tax collector was a lucrative profession. All the parables in Matthew chapter 13 teach us about God and his kingdom. The word kingdom is used 28 times in the Gospel of Matthew. The parable in this week's lesson appears only in the Gospel of Matthew. In this week's lesson, Jesus used two everyday items to present a profound truth. The items were wheat and tares. Items Jesus' audience would have been remarkably familiar with. Jesus periodically used seeds in his parables and in his teachings. Last week's lesson introduced the parable of the sower, the seed, and the soils. In this parable, it teaches that people give different responses to the Word of God. The parable in this week's lesson focuses on the wheat and the tares, and it highlights that Satan will plant tares or weeds in the very place where the seed of the kingdom has been sown, as we will study and read in Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 30. And the explanation of the second parable is contained in verses 36 through 43. In Jesus's day, wheat was useful, just as it is today. 
However, tares or darnel seeds were useless. Interestingly, darnel seeds looked like wheat at the beginning of their growth cycle. In the parable highlighted today, the field owner instructed his servants to let the wheat and tares grow together until harvest time. The lesson aims for this week's lesson are, number one, understand the kingdom principle at the heart of Jesus's parable of the weeds. The second lesson aim, trust that the reward of good and punishment of evil are part of God's plan. And the third lesson aim, persist in kingdom work when it appears that those who do evil will not be brought to justice. As we continue our glimpse into this week's lesson, I'm going to share two key points from each outline in the lesson text and expound some on each one. There are two outlines presented in the Adult Faith Pathway Sunday School book. The first lesson outline is, let them grow together. And that's Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 30. The second lesson outline is, let the called glow together. And that's Matthew chapter 13, verses 36 through 43. Let's begin our analysis of the biblical text with the first lesson outline. Let them all grow together. Jesus continues his teaching about the kingdom of God. He is once again using images from agriculture that the people would instantly recognize. Jesus presents the case of a man whose field was corrupted and compromised by an enemy when no one was looking or watching. I will begin reading with, at verse 24 from the New International Version. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. Here, Jesus tells a second parable about sowing seeds. In this parable, he focused on two sowers. One of the sowers sowed the good seed to grow wheat. And the enemy, the other sower, sowed weeds among the wheat. The wheat represents the good seed with which the owner sows in the field. It is important to note that the sower was diligent in sowing good seeds for a healthy wheat harvest in his field. Verse 25 reads, But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. The one who sowed the tares in the field is referred to as the enemy of the farmer. The phrase, while men slept, refers to in the night or nighttime when the enemy's actions could occur without being noticed. The effort of the farmer did not keep the enemy out of the field. Despite the owner's best efforts, an enemy snuck into the field overnight, sowed tares among the wheat that had been sown, and then went away, as we just read. The enemy came and scattered bad seed on the newly plowed field, perhaps before the good seed had been plowed or tilled in. We clearly see the work of the enemy in this parable. Satan is working to hinder the work of God's people on earth and to keep people from becoming Christians. Key point number one, we live in a world that is clearly under attack from Satan. Satan has sown deliberate sabotage in our homes, churches, communities, and government. Satan's goal is to corrupt, pollute, and undermine the work of Jesus. Verse 26 reads, When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. As the wheat began to grow, the owner noticed tares or weeds growing also. 
it is extremely difficult to separate the tares from the actual wheat because of their similarity while growing. Consequently, the tares did not become visible until the wheat sprung up. Hence, the tares had plenty of time to do damage because they grew out of sight as tares because they grew in the midst of the wheat. Verse 27, the owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? And verse 28, an enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked, do you want us to go and pull them up? And verse 29, no, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. The owner quickly attributed the weeds to the work of an outsider. An enemy hath done this, as we just read. The enemy is Satan. The devil or Satan has planted many counterfeits in the world today, false teachers and false preachers. Satan and his demonic army infiltrate and mask themselves in places and people looking good and in some instances even acting good and sounding good. Satan knows the soil where he plants his erroneous and false doctrine. Satan also knows that it will take deep root and rapid root in the human heart. Hence, Satan plants his deception and then he simply goes his way and leaves it alone, waiting for it to bear satanic fruit. Verse 30 reads, Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. The master ordered the servants to allow both the wheat and the snares to grow together until harvest. After harvest, the master would send out his reapers to collect and burn the weeds and gather the wheat into his barn. The young tares are weeds and the young blades of wheat look the same and cannot be distinguished until they are grown and ready for harvest. Only when the wheat matures, then can one notice the difference. Tares represent the unbelievers and wheat represent the believers. They must live side by side in this world. Key point number two. Jesus' parable admonishes us not to pull the weeds, but instead to let them grow together with the wheat until harvest time. Wheat and Darnell weeds look essentially the same in their early growth stages. They can be distinguished when they are mature, as we stated. So trying to uproot the weeds right away would risk missing some of the weeds by mistaking them for wheat, uprooting some of the wheat by mistaking it for weeds. Rather than working to remove the weeds, the owner would continue to care for the field, allowing both the weeds and the wheat to grow together until the time of the harvest. At the harvest, the weeds will be uprooted and thrown away. The harvest represents the end of the world. God's harvest, judgment of all people is coming. The time of the harvest is when reapers would gather the wheat and burn the tares. After the wheat and tares are harvested, as just stated, the weeds are burned. Whenever the phrase at harvest time is used, it is used to refer to the wicked or the final judgment for non-believers. The second lesson outline, let the called glow together. Jesus explains 
the parable in verses 36 through 43. In verse 36, notice that the setting changed. Verse 36 reads, Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. Jesus presented the parable in the public. The scripture says, Then he left the crowd. The disciples were asking for further explanation. Lord, show us what this means. They wanted further understanding. Have there been times when you stopped and asked the Lord for further application and understanding of a lesson, a scripture, or a sermon you heard? Lord, show me what this means. Give me further understanding. This is what the disciples asked. Jesus answered the disciples' questions concerning the parable in private. Jesus explains to his disciples in a clear and concise way what almost every element of the parable represents. Jesus explained to them what the parable meant. Key point number one, Jesus is teaching about the kingdom of God. Verse 37 reads, he answered, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. Verse 38, the field is the world and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one. Verse 39, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age and the harvesters are angels. Satan has planted tares within the kingdom. The tares are the children of the wicked one, the devil. There are those who appear to be believers, but who are not. Verse 40 reads, As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. And verse 41, The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. Jesus further added that the harvest is the end of the world. Verse 41 tells us that we must leave the weeding to the angels and stay focused on the mission that Jesus has given us. And that is to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God. The angels, not any human beings, are authorized to pluck out the weeds from the wheat. Angels are messengers of God who separate the wheat and the tares. Jesus tells the disciples that the gathering and burning are synonymous with the end of this world. There are true and false believers. We should be cautious in our judgments because only Christ is qualified to make the final separation. True believers should focus their time and attention on making sure that they themselves are ready to meet God. Let the Lord do the judging. Verse 42, they will throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Key point number two, God will have the final word concerning those who do evil. Weeping, wailing indicates sorrow or remorse and gnashing of teeth shows extreme anxiety or pain. The weeds were first bundled for burning and the wheat was gathered for the born so is the kingdom of God. For the weeds, children of the wicked one, there is an everlasting fire where there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth, as we read in verse 42. Verse 42 highlights the severity of the judgment of the wicked. The weeping and gnashing of teeth speak of 
holistic pain and anguish in a place of eternal separation and sorrow. In summary, we should not attempt to be judge and jury and attempt to weed out those we think are bad or evil and not a part of the kingdom of God. We must leave the weeding to the angels and stay focused on the mission that Jesus has given us to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God. In God's own time, he will do the separating. He will justly reward each person according to what he or she has done. All we can see is the outward appearance. We cannot discern anyone's heart or intentions. Jesus makes clear that we simply cannot be certain of who is in or who is out. Our closing thought and question. As revealed in this week's lesson, we cannot know people's hearts or where their lives might take them or their potential for conversion. God has not equipped us with the insight necessary to weed the garden. Question, what must we do while we are in the midst of the garden to make sure that anyone who studies our lives and conversation we hear Jesus and see in us the evidence of his love, grace, and mercy displayed in our daily living. Next week's lesson continues in the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 44 through 52. Jesus continues his teaching on the kingdom of God in the lesson entitled, Searching for Buried Treasure. In closing, thank you for tuning in to Sunday School Lesson at a Glance. I hope this glimpse of this week's lesson is helpful to you as you prepare to teach and study God's Word. Don't forget to click the like, share, and subscribe button. For additional information and resources, contact the Sunday School Publishing Board. Blessings to you until the next Sunday School Lesson at a Glance. We invite you to join us each week as we take a glimpse into the Sunday School Lesson. Subscribe now.